talking with uh, Andrew Morris, the saxophonist of the Orno Band. The band. I just dragged him out for a few minutes to talk to him. Andrew, hi. Andrew. Hi, how are you? How's the tour going so far? Uh, it's good. I'm yeah. enjoying it. Yeah. How, how are the responses so far? Oh, we've had very good responses. I think that um, his music is now much more widely popular than it was a couple of years ago. And a lot of people know the songs. And because we've got a mixture of, of quite fast dance numbers and very popular slow songs, then, then the audience seemed to be... We had them dancing in Washington at the end and in yeah, New York too. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Uh, I wanted to ask you about you and Arnold. You sure. and Arnold have been playing for a long time. How did this all start? It started about uh, a year and a half ago. Um, I can't exactly remember how, but somebody suggested that as a musician I should get in contact with Ornob. Uh, and I seem to remember them saying that of, of all Bangladeshi musicians, and now I know it's true, he's the most likely to be interested in something experimental, um, out of the box. And so I called him. In fact, I spoke to Shahana first of all. And, um, but then eventually spoke to him and I just said... I'm a musician, I'm in Dhaka, uh, I like your music, I knew it quite well, and do you think there's any point in this sitting together, seeing what happens? And he, to be fair, he said come over, he didn't know who I was. Um, and the first time we sat, he played, obviously he was just playing his guitar, acoustic, and I played the kind of stuff that I do, which is trying to support the melody and something quite gentle, and obviously he liked it. Um, and when you can hit it off, I mean, sometimes jamming with people, it doesn't always work quite that quickly. Sometimes it doesn't work. And when you like music a lot, it's much easier. Sometimes I get asked to go and jam with blues bands, and I can do it because I know what kind of notes have to come out, but I don't really feel it in the same way. But with some of these songs, like Hari Gechi, for example, like Sheji Bo Sheji, uh, the slower ones, and also the, the faster, sort of pacier songs, and, and some people have expressed surprise that, that uh, I can even try to play along with these songs without really knowing the lyrics. From, uh, like what I've been playing, like, this is a different kind of music. Yes, but, but the basic thing is that, that the mood of a song is almost independent of the lyrics. I mean, it, it should support the lyrics. If it's a very sad lyric and a happy tune, then nobody would really go for it. And I suppose the... the the small part of me, which is musical, is responding to the music of the song uh, and trying to go with that. And because those songs with sad lyrics come out sad, then I can just play that kind of style. Have you encouraged Arnold to play English music? No. no I, 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 I think that what he's doing is, is unique. I think that in Dhaka there are a lot of bands who are very capable, uh, good musicians, but are playing uh, essentially music which you could find anywhere in the world. Young rock bands in the Philippines or in Germany or in Japan are all doing the same stuff. You know, the, the heavy metal, the underground. And while it, it's, it's good to see people um, you know, mastering their instruments and playing together, and anyone making music is a good thing by definition. But what I think is special about his music is that it could only come from Bangladesh and yet it's also very accessible to an international audience. But it's very much, it expresses, and so when I play along with him, I think back to, to my experience in Bangladesh and, and it comes out in, in what I try to do. Do you think his music transcends uh, only, not only the Bangladesh culture, like, but he can appeal to a broader audience, let's say like audience in North America or Europe? I think so, because it's good music, and I think good music, you know, whether we go and hear a band from Peru or from Korea, if they can do what they do well, then I think it should. It should transcend. Let's talk about Andrew Morris for a okay. Talk about Arnold a lot. Tell us something about yourself. Like how, how did your musical career start? Well, it was, uh, I played in school. I mean, in, in Wales, where I come from, a lot of kids are encouraged to play instruments in school. And um, I played clarinet, and I also got encouraged by my family to play piano. I played guitar a little. But then I went from clarinet to playing sax when I was in my teenage years. And then I played for about six, seven years, including when I was traveling. I played in Turkey in a nightclub, for example, with a guitarist and a singer. 
But then when I was uh, getting seriously into teaching, I gave up. So when I was about 24, I went to Africa and I couldn't carry everything that I had with me. So I left the sax, I sold it and I gave it up for 18 years. 18 years. And I started again just two years ago. And I thought, essentially, uh, it happened because I was in Bangladesh. I saw that there was some nice music around. And again, then that kind of itcha came back into me. <laughs> and, and I thought, okay, maybe I can, I can try. I mean, that was one element, that there was music there. The second element is that I think, for me, Bangladesh is a country where if you've got interests and talents, and maybe if you're foreign, if you're white, maybe, I don't know if it's a part of the reason, you can take them quite far. So I began to write. I find I'm writing in the Daily Star magazine. I begin to play. I find I'm playing with the best musician in the country. So it's a place where you can make contacts. Everybody knows everybody. So it's a good sort of uh, a good culture in which to do that. And the there was a third thing which I've now forgotten. But anyway, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, what's next for Andrew Morris? What can we expect from Andrew Morris? Are well, can you are you doing anything solo? I have. A, I play in in a jazz setup, and we play mostly to the expat um, clubs in Dhaka because they like that kind of music on the weekend. I'm actually leaving Bangladesh in May next year. I'm going to live in France. Uh, yes, for good. I can never say never, but well, uh, I mean it, it's been it's been a great time. I mean I think that uh, playing with or not playing at this level. And playing with musicians of this caliber because it's not only Orno, but Jibon, Nozrul, uh, Nazia singing, and, and um, Drubo on the bass are all accomplished musicians. And we have a great time, we have a good time practicing together. But we've reached a point now where we've gone on, on what we're calling a world tour. We're going to make an album after this, which features some of the songs that we've done together specifically here. And then if. If I have to leave this setup, it's kind of a good time to do it when we're all on top and when we're, you know, where we're performing well, rather than waiting, who knows, for the band to disintegrate like so many bands before. So it's it's a good time to finish. I'll I'll miss it. I really will. I mean, obviously, I look for music opportunities elsewhere, but there's something special about playing in this group. I mean, the atmosphere and the. I mean, one particular thing about the way Orna works is that he's, he's a phenomenally gifted musician. He's also a very hard-working professional in his music. So there's a lot of uh, points in every song where, where we've... Um, that's okay. A lot, of, a lot of points in every song where we, we've worked to structure and to craft things. And, and all of that comes from his head. Obviously, we play our instruments, but it, it's, it's been an interesting process to work with somebody who's got so much music in his head. I mean, I'm musical, and we're all musical in the group, obviously, but to work with somebody who has so many ideas and who can just sort of close his eyes and, and see musical shapes, that's an interesting experience for me. I haven't seen, in my life, I haven't seen anybody who can do it like that before. If you want to take something from Bangladesh, what would it be? For me, Bangladesh has always been about, about the people. I mean, I've lived in, in many countries, and there are countries where the food is wonderful, or there are countries where the architecture, like I lived in Prague for a year, um, or the natural scenery, I lived in Turkey near the sea. Um, but for me, and, and each country has its strong point, and no one country has all of those things together. If there was a country like that, then we'd all move there. But um, for Bangladesh, for me, it's always been about the people. I've been very lucky in having uh, 10 or 12 very, very close friends, all Bangladeshi. So my social life in Bangladesh is, apart from one foreign woman that I, I, I'm a friend a with. Friends are Bangladeshi. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that through music. And yeah, there's some interesting people. I've got friends who are, my best friend is a photographer.